Okay, all right. I am a bit revived since last night. That was hilarious. Um, and I have meditated. I've done my breath work. I did my morning routine. And now I'm gonna go to the gym. Today's video, the plan is to take you along my day here in Boston while I tell you about why I love Eastern philosophy and why it's totally changed my life and why it can help you as well. Talking about why Zen philosophy, Eastern philosophy overall has totally changed my life and made me just a happy, fulfilled human being on her path. So I'm gonna share that with you while I take you along to just a couple of activities. So first things first, I'm gonna hit the freaking gym. Okay, so we're back from the gym and I'm hungry. It's like 1.30 or something. That's what happens when you start your day late. And we're gonna go get the best matcha ever! Woo! Okay, let's go. So while I was at the gym, I was pondering our question for the day, which is why Zen? Why philosophy? Why all these different like ancient wisdoms? And I was like, wow, a big part of my confidence and like my willingness to just prioritize what actually makes me happy, like the classic thing at the gym or anywhere in public really is to be sort of like timid about what you're doing for some weird reason. And I've literally from studying Zen and meditating and just that whole world that I put myself in, which I will talk about more in a second, realize that that has resulted in like me doing this stuff at the gym, like headstands, handstands, like I just don't care because I know what's important. I know what to value, what to prioritize. If there's a choice between two things, it's like, what's more important? Me getting the shot and having fun making this video so that I can share a beautiful message with you guys or being sort of timid and like watering myself down, being, you know, quiet, whatever, because of fear of what someone might think. For me, that answer is very obvious, it's the former, and it's to prioritize joy, fulfillment, and being right where I am, right? And if my intention is to share this message with you, I'm gonna film it, who cares, right? So that is, for me, inextricably tied to this philosophy that I've come to love over the past year, and now I'm starting to like, really teach and just dive into even further because it's totally, it is a new way of approaching life wherein you remember what is truly important. And because you remember like the grand scheme of things, which is these different principles around, you know, oneness and we're all connected and presence and yeah, I, these concepts, which again, I outline all the time on my channel, so I won't go into them deeply now, but all of these, you know, ideas and practices, the whole point is to just be here now and recognize how beautiful life is. Like, it really is about that. So like, as I'm at the gym, running, working out, whatever, I'm just like, here I am, this is awesome. And that ability to be like, amped about life, even in the minuscule things, I think is pretty life-changing. Oh, okay. We're gonna have a quick chat while I eat my yogurt because it's two o'clock in the afternoon and I haven't eaten anything before you yell at me. Um, it's fine. I had pizza literally at 11.30 and I feel like I needed to fast. I never really fast ever, but I feel like because I was, I was just feeling like swollen and weird, so. Mmm. Oh my God, that's good. Wow. Okay, so we're gonna have a quick chat before I go get my delicious, long-awaited matcha. 
Before I was explaining how Eastern philosophy, namely Zen, has been a huge proponent of actually my confidence. And I just wanna like preface this entire conversation and frankly, so much of the content that I make around Zen, Eastern philosophy, etc., is that I really, the way that I do things, I guess, is I like to learn and tap into the ancient wisdom that we can literally either tap into that because it's coded into us or through obvious things like reading and listening and you know listening to lectures research study that kind of thing and after i have studied things in depth i want to make sure that i integrate it and i want to integrate it in a way that feels authentic and unique and true for me. And I think a lot of times in the realm of religion, which you'll see Alan Watts likes to argue that Zen is not really a religion, which I actually agree with when you really get into it. The point is that I think it's important to recognize a lot of these ancient ways of thinking, when we give them a name like Zen or Buddhism or Stoicism, Stoicism wasn't a religion, but Zen I believe is a lot closer to Stoicism than it is to like, let's say Christianity or another major religion. And the thing with religion is that you get into the realm of dogma and no, that's not the right way to practice it. This is, and what is so fantastic about Zen is that when you really read into the history and learn about how it was passed down and how it was passed on, is that it was really a lot about like question and answer between a student and a master, but that the student was to figure out on his own what the truth was. And I really take to that small piece because it instills this idea that you can go about life learning and reading and studying and listening to all the greats, but you have to be able to integrate it into your own life and give it your own flavor. And I believe that that's the true essence of what we're meant to learn in this life is that there's ancient wisdom that is encoded into each and every single one of us, but that in the end, it's about making it our own and bringing it into our own life. And so for me, the confidence piece has really stemmed from the fact that when I can see reality as it is, just so much of like the human ego mind and all the noise that it creates completely falls away. Essentially there's before and after there's before you have your sort of awakening, what you would call a Satori, a sudden awakening, and there's after. And I think afterwards, you start to see life through a different light. And the way you see life is really important because that's how you see every day, that's how you see every interaction, that's how you see all your problems, and that's how you can zoom out and see that we're on this tiny little speck of dust in an enormous universe that is ever expanding. And that can be really empowering because it means that you get to be here now experiencing the universe as it experiences itself. And I think that's just beautiful. So the whole genesis of this video, of this topic is to explain why I feel like studying these ancient philosophies and seeing how they're true in your modern life can really bring you a lot of happiness and joy and presence, which is the catalyst for so much greatness in life in whatever way you want it. I've been talking up this matcha and it's time, it's time. 44 degrees, I can do this, it's not that bad. guys um update i drank my matcha and it was literally delicious also just the most cute little meat 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 whatever the fuck you call it i just met someone so nice and so cute and she was just sitting next to me and i was like taking a video vlogging and i've been just i've been feeling called to just like vlog what i'm out and about because i think it's interesting and whatever and anyway she was like oh sorry i didn't mean to get in your shot and I was like, oh, it's totally fine. It's so windy. I thought that was so cool that like I wanted to vlog and I was nervous and I did it and it ended up making me meet someone so nice and cool. Isn't that great? There are 1000% cameras in this elevator, including other than mine. <laughs> Oh, 
um, hello there, amped about what just happened because it seems so small. But then you realize that life is made up of those tiny little moments where things just feel like divinely supported. And call me crazy, but I feel like literally my pursuit of studying Zen over the last year has just made me so excited and in love with life even when things are weird and hard but then it's like when you have a good moment you're like the gods are in my favor okay <laughs> that sunset oh my god that's actually stunning i love when the light looks like it's pouring out from the sky it's just so stunning Wow, there is an absolutely stunning sunset happening outside right now and it's perfect because I'm gonna stand here and talk to you. I have my notes, I have my notes here. Okay, let me tell you the story of how I came across Eastern philosophy and why it seriously changed the way that I look at everything. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I think it can do that for you too. And I know that people kind of get daunted and scared or pushed away by, you know, specific terms like Zen and blah, 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 and all these, whatever. If you feel like you need more of an introduction, that's exactly why I made this channel because I want to teach in a very digestible and easy to relate to way all these fantastic principles. My spiritual journey started actually like two-ish years ago when I had my grandmother pass away. And I think for a lot of people, grief and mourning kind of flings you into a very uh, reflective state of your life where you're just sort of starting to question and think deeply about, you know, what's this whole thing about? Like, what is life? What is death? How do we grieve these things? And so that really catapulted me into a state of self-discovery and simultaneously spending a lot of time alone. In the summer of 2021? Yes, in the summer of 2021, I was going to the beach a lot alone. I would just sit there and journal. I had started my whole kind of spiritual practice. I was learning how to manifest things. And so I'd spend a lot of time alone. And I remember one day at the beach, I just had this really profound realization while looking at the ocean that I just felt really connected to everything. And there was really no words for it. I just remember looking out at the ocean and being like, I'm the same as this. Like, there's literally no difference between me, what I perceive as me and what I'm looking at, other than like the things that I make up in my mind. And that realization sent me on this synchronistic path. And so from there, before reading really any spiritual text or studying anything about Zen, Eastern philosophy, what have you, I was just like, wow, I feel like and this changes everything. Like the way that I interacted with life suddenly was different. And then of course, serendipitously, I came across someone named Alan Watts. I saw this amazing uh, podcaster uh, and sort of like speaker influencer, Krista Williams, shout out, sharing about Alan Watts on her Instagram page. And I was like, that's really interesting. I feel like this guy, I just like what he's saying. I would hear, you know, his audio and someone else shared this amazing audio, which I'll link because it's so powerful. This meditation by by Alan Watts. It's all about like starting to listen and that drives you into meditation. Point is, I came across Alan Watts' work. So I ordered his book called The Book on the Taboo Against Knowing Who You Are. It took me a few months to read this and this was my catapulting. This is what flung me into Zen. This is what flung me into the world of Eastern philosophy in this completely different way of thinking. This book really just goes over the basics of ego and perception, understanding that the way that we think of ourselves, the way that we look at us versus the world and all of that is an illusion. It's made up. And the book essentially through beautiful writing goes through that entire thought process and simultaneously introduces you to Eastern philosophy and Zen. So that was like my initiation was this book called The Book and I just started to feel like what I had experienced on the beach months before was actually an unshakable truth. And so feeling like what I felt inside of me had been already discovered made me be like, oh wow, there's this ancient wisdom that literally lives inside of us already. And it's kind of like we just forgot 
because it's not like I added it to myself. It felt more like a delayering, like a loss of, of perception that actually made me feel like I was seeing things for what they really were. So after that, I basically deep dived into all things Zen. I read this book called Elements of Zen. Every single book that I'm mentioning is linked on my Amazon list of essential readings because they're all super fantastic. And I just continued to have this experience where when I was present and creating the environment for me to be at one with my surroundings, to listen, to feel, to just be in the moment, I continued to have this like really wonderful loop where I would experience something as fundamentally true and then I would read it as an ancient piece of wisdom. Like I would read, you know, a quote or some very profound eloquent teaching from a Zen master and it was getting at the same thing. And I was like, that's crazy. I felt that on my own. It just gave me this sort of appreciation for the theory or idea, philosophy, if you will, that we as humans have this wisdom within us. That's what the channel, this channel name is. Wisdom from within is an homage to the idea that we already know. We already have this knowing, this wisdom, this ability to understand our environment, to be one with nature. And we don't really need anything else to, we, we don't need like this proof that we go through most of our lives thinking we're supposed to be us versus the environment and we're just like constantly forcing, forcing, forcing. And when people get quiet and when people really get present, they start to learn that there's something else happening here. Basically, I really started to feel like I was connected, like I was part of something greater than just me, like this individual speck of dust, if you will. And what's so beautiful about that is it made me appreciate the idea that all is one. Like oneness is really something so beautiful to tap into. And I feel that the more we spend time in an environment or doing activities that help us feel in flow, that help us feel just connected. Like the irony of this video is that it's so hard to effectively put into words what I'm talking about. And that's exactly why I love Zen so much because as a philosophy, it is so different from the typical religious structure that is someone on a pedestal literally preaching down to people and proposing that they are the only ones who know the word of God, the word of truth. And in Zen, it really just invites us to sit in the feeling. A, Zen, a really powerful Zen proverb is that in Zen we do not find the answer, we lose the question. All of these little sayings are trying to put into words what is actually kind of indescribable. And the pursuit of experiences which are meant to be felt and not described to me is one of the very biggest essences of Zen. And why it changed my life is because the fact that I can sit and stare at a sunset and just feel so overjoyed with life seems really minor and not that important. But when I think about my entire life, I want to be filled with moments where I just feel in awe. I want to be in awe of my life. I want to be in awe of what I witness. When I sit in a coffee shop and people watch and just observe humans doing their thing, I want to feel love for every person. And that makes my heart feel so good. That makes my body vibrate at a resonance that I think, That makes my body vibrate at a resonance that I think attracts a great life. And the irony is that I feel like I have felt less of a need to strive and like struggle and like do this whole, you know, conventional hustle thing with the mindset that I'm whole, I'm connected, I'm supported, I'm divinely guided. And it doesn't actually change like how productive I am or, you know, it's not like I'm giving up on my dreams. If anything, I feel even more supported in what I go after because I have this ancient knowledge in me. Like it is passed down in our freaking DNA this wisdom. And that's why you can be sitting on a beach alone and realize the truth of reality without anybody telling it to you. That's what Zen is to me. That's what it's been about is 
finding more and more the moments that I can truly be present and truly be appreciative of what I have already. And that's so beautiful. It's so simple that saying it out loud just doesn't even seem that incredible. But I think that life changes in those little moments. And every time that I've come across a Zen passage or an Eastern philosophical idea and I'm able to connect it to my day-to-day -day life, it just makes me feel really inspired and in awe. And I don't know what else is more important in life than that. And I wish that for others. That's why I, that's why I love to teach it, talk about it, to just share these learnings because when we apply them to self-development, to our life, our relationships, our business, our career, it just changes the way that we operate day to day and it seems insignificant, but it's truly so fulfilling. The purpose of Zen is not to find more explanations. It's not to come across a more profound way of stringing words together. It's not to feel holier than anyone. It's not to strive on some path towards some end. It's to be here right now and to know that that is the entire meaning of everything and that there's literally nothing else to do except to breathe and be alive right now. I mean, just look at these clouds. Like the fact that those are just casually formed in the sky and they make these really nice shapes and they play with the color of the sunshine. That's incredible. That's just amazing. And we literally all come from the same thing. We literally have all always been here. We've always been a part of this earth, a part of this universe, and now we're just in a different form, experiencing it. The more that you create moments in your life that make you feel connected and in love, period, I just think that that's how you win. And I want more people to feel like that because literally it's a Thursday afternoon, I'm looking at a sunset and I just wanna cry because of how beautiful life is.